Good guy, that Mike Garofalo. Mike Garofalo is back from the NFL Network for another season with us here on SportsCenter with Jay Onright. We could not be more thrilled, especially with all the news coming out of the Bay Area on Tuesday in the National Football League. Trent Williams strikes a deal with the 49ers. He's going to stick around until the 2026 season. Brandon Ayuk already extended with the team last week. So, Mike, John Lynch, our old pal, keeping the band back together for another run, I guess. And they've done a great job. Go back to Debo Samuel, now Brandon Ayuk, uh, being able to navigate two trade requests all the way to the point of getting the players to re-sign and stay in Santa Clara. And then this uh, Trent Williams situation where he was holding out, uh, wanting more guarantees. His, his was actually more quiet, uh, at least until the start of training camp, where he held out. He said he was surprised it took this long. But in the end, he gets $48 million fully guaranteed over the next two years. That's what he was looking for. He had no more guaranteed money left on his deal. So he gets that through the 2025 season. $25 million signing bonus. Loses about $2 million in fines for not reporting to training camp, uh, which was the cost of doing business in his mind because he picked up, I think, another $5 million this upcoming season. So it's a net positive for him in the end and gets to the point where uh, he is in line to earn over the course of his career about a quarter billion dollars, $250 million uh, in all if he plays out the rest of this contract. He is still arguably one of the best, uh, or uh, he definitely is one of the best left tackles in the league, arguably the best in the league. Uh, so this was an important piece to get him in place. If I had told Niners fans or even their coach or general manager just a couple of weeks ago, you're going to have both Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk for a full week of practice leading up to the game against the Jets. They would have said, okay. All right, because there was a lot of drama, a lot of consternation, but it just takes that pressure point of the start of the season to get some of these things done. Uh, some have been done, some not. In this case, for the 49ers, got both done. They hope uh, now Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy, and they are also thankful, as we all are, that Ricky Pierce, all the rookie wide receiver, is okay after a scary situation where he got shot in the chest as part of an attempted robbery there. Uh, same, seems like he, in the long run, will be okay, a full recovery there. So lots of good news coming out of Santa Clara lately. That is good news. And you mentioned some contract disputes get done. Some have not gotten done. A couple of big-name players yeah. still looking for new deals. Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott, Cincinnati Bengals, Jamar Chase. Is there an end in sight yeah. for either of these contract disputes in your mind, Mike? I believe that there's a chance that there's an end in sight for both guys. And I've been saying all along, I feel like Chase could be the one that really is up against the start of the season. It could be done on Saturday. A lot of times what we see uh, right before the uh, first weekend is that Saturday a bunch of deals getting done Play players saying I want this deal done before I set foot on the field for my first game and teams saying well we want it done uh, before this player costs a lot more money in this upcoming offseason in free agency so I think Chase has got a shot to be that guy it's at the point now where he's not practicing and Zach Taylor the head coach of the Bengals trying his best to be supportive of Jamar Chase but also saying like I don't know if he's going to be uh okay from a physical standpoint to play in this game because receivers who miss practice time you're at the risk of soft tissue hamstring injuries Justin Jefferson had one that he dealt with uh, after his contract issue last year so it, you got to be careful with these things in the Bengals walking that line while trying to get this done as for Dak Prescott he's going to be available he's going to be uh, he's going to play that's not the question the question is if it's not done before the start of the season now what happens? Are we then headed toward free agency with Dak Prescott? That seems to be the case. Doesn't seem like he's interested in having any conversations during the season, at which point he'll reach free agency. He still could go back with the Cowboys. Seems like he's going to reach free agency. And from a free agent standpoint, maybe the most high-profile pro free agent ever. Yeah. Uh, you could say maybe Tom Brady, but that was the tail end of his career. He didn't have a lot of suitors. Dak Prescott would have a lot of suitors. So a lot on the line for the Cowboys, even though we know Dak Prescott is going to play week one this year. Gosh, you almost hope it happens so we can see exactly what that kind of bidding war would be. But uh, a lot of yeah. quarterback movement this offseason, as you know, Mike. But only one matchup in the opening week that involves a couple of quarterbacks making their debuts with their respective teams. Of course, that will be Kirk Cousins yeah. in Atlanta and Russell Wilson with the Pittsburgh Steelers still sound strange. They are the starters yeah. now, Mike, and I know you're going to be there to see that one in person. They are the starters now. Yeah. Do you expect them both to be the starters with their teams by the end of this season? 
That's a good question. Look, for Kirk Cousins, I know Michael Penix is looking over his shoulder uh, and the Falcons and that curious decision to draft Penix despite giving Kirk Cousins all that money in free agency. I have been given every indication that it is Kirk Cousins' team and it is not a quarterback controversy and that they fully expect to be competitive with Cousins this year. So I'll say Cousins goes wire to wire this year. And then the offseason, we can have some kind of conversations with regard to Penix, depending on how it goes for Cousins. For Wilson, I don't know that he's going to keep this job very long, to be honest with you. I mean, I know he's got the confidence of Mike Tomlin, but he's got to show some better decision making than he's shown so far, from my understanding, with regard to what he's done uh, both in training camp and during the preseason. He played well enough in the preseason, but it's not like he ran away with this job. And I know that there's a lot of intrigue with Justin Fields there with regard to his physical ability and what he can do, the upside there. So there might be a temptation early on if Wilson struggles and maybe has some of the games that we saw in Denver that led to frustration for Sean Payton to say, we've got Justin Fields sitting there who has done a good job of taking coaching, has gotten better in the classroom, on the field, in practice, during games. They like what they've seen from him. This is definitely one to watch as the season plays out, in large part, Jay, because the Steelers have one of the toughest schedules in the league. Mike Tomlin's got that streak of uh, winning seasons or, or non-losing seasons going right now. This very, very much could be in jeopardy this upcoming season.